Hi, welcome to a new episode, in the Internet Surfer, hosting the most horror, and creepiest stories, from Reddit. Please, don't forget, to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. A Head in a Bag A Long Horror Story from Reddit Nasleep I was walking alongside the train tracks when I saw it at a distance. Some garbage, white and fluttering in the breeze. I kept walking and got curious as I got closer to it, then stopped when it was at my feet. A dirty white plastic shopping bag with a yellow smiley face and the text, Have a nice day. Just as I was noticing the long silvery hair dancing from out of the fluttering plastic and the faint rotten steak smell, the breeze suddenly changed directions, opening the bag to show me its contents. I gasped and gagged at the same time. It was a head. A woman's head, and by the looks of her not that I was a forensic expert or anything but by the texture of her skin, dry, sunken, and graying, she looked to have been dead for a few days. Her eyelids were half-closed, bearing cloudy eyes of indeterminate color. I immediately pulled out my cell phone to call the police and had dialed 911 but had not initiated the call when I noticed something poking out from between her shrunken gray lips, between her bared teeth, something that gave me pause. The corner of what could only be a bill the gray-green betrayed it. I pocketed my phone and crouched down to look closer. The denomination of it was barely peeking out. A twenty. Before I could let the gravity of what I was doing get to me, I pinched the corner of the bill between my fingers and gently tugged, then pulled it out. It was coated in sticky yellowish saliva and the corner that had been at the back of the throat was dyed brown with blood. But it was a twenty. I'll, uh, I said aloud, stupidly. I will deal with this later. I did not want this DNA slick bill in my possession when I called the police officers. I hurried back the way I came, dizzy and vibrating, and got back on the street and walked to the grocery store. In the bathroom I wiped the bill down as best I could and then went grocery shopping. I prayed the cashier would accept the bill in its state as I was standing in the checkout line and practically broke out in giggles of glee when she did. Back at my dark studio apartment the light bulbs had long burnt out I ripped some packages of ramen out of my new boxes of them and shoved the rest into the otherwise empty cupboard, then had a feast of chicken-flavored ramen soup. When my belly was full, the thought of the head returned to me. I thought of what to tell the police the next day. It was still there when I returned to the same spot the following afternoon. 911 was dialed and my thumb was poised to send the call. There was a piece of paper sticking out from between its teeth, something I had missed yesterday that had been pulled out with the bill. I really wanted to know what it was but also wanted to be done with this whole thing. I stared into its cloudy irises for much too long. Of course I should have called the police officers by now, but what if the paper was something good? Like a gift certificate for a free donut or something? Finally, I put my phone away again and crouched down to pull out whatever it was, gently tugging it with two pinch fingers. It was larger than I expected, folded up and shoved down its throat. Printer paper sized, staples still stuck in it at the top and bottom. When I carefully opened it, I was thoroughly disappointed. A job ad for some janitorial position at a local elementary school. My gaze shifted from the filthy ad to the grimacing head. I could not envision how or why any of these items had ended up in its mouth at all. In my wonder I gave the ad a second look, which I would not have done if I had seen it posted on a telephone pole or whatever. I thought, it advertised a good hourly rate. Better than any equivalent position I had ever had, and certainly better than my cashier job I had just lost. Instead of calling the police, I carefully lifted the plastic bag by the handles with my sleeve covering my hand, not expecting how heavy a human head was, and quickly carried it nearby and out of sight, in a grassy impression at the base of an oak tree, nestled between the roots. Before I left the head for the day, I slightly pried open its mouth to make sure I was not missing anything this time. All there was a dry shriveled tongue. Then I covered it in fallen leaves and went home. I do not know what I expected to happen by putting it there. By the next evening, I had an interview scheduled for the job from the ad. 
The sun was sinking down behind the horizon when I went to go check on the head. I was a bit panicked when I could not remember where exactly I had put it until I recognized the tree and its snake-like roots. I shined my foam light down at the ground and was a bit startled by the face and its grin peeking out from under the leaves. It had something for me, shining out from between its teeth. I held my breath and stepped closer, cautiously, to make sure. A shudder shook my spine. There was a quarter, a dime, and a raspberry-flavored lollipop still in its wrapper. I whirled around and shone my light all around me. Looking for what, I do not know. All there was train tracks and gravel and trees. The only explanation I could think of now was that whoever did this was coming back and shoving stuff in the head's mouth. But how had they known where I had hidden the head? I had barely remembered where I had hidden it. But like, who cares? I thought. Someone wanted to help me out. I felt like it was for me specifically. And I had this silly notion that the head wanted to help me. It could not be that the killer wanted to help me because then that would mean I was a bad person for not calling the police officers. And I was not calling the police officers. I arranged more cover for the head after plucking the little gifts from between its teeth, covering it with branches and more leaves, then went home. I visited it every day. It did not always have something for me, but it usually did. Mostly coins, little pieces of candy or cough drops still in their wrappers, which I did not eat, just stowed away in a drawer, pages from coupon books, beads. But sometimes it was something good, like another crumpled billet even brought me a ten once and a couple of times some gift cards, though only one had a non-zero balance of a few dollars. Everything was dirty and seemed to have been scraped out of the gutter. After getting hired for that job, I was not in desperate need of pocket change I did not struggle with rent anymore, I always had food in my kitchen. I kept going back because I felt like the head cared about me. It was a nice feeling, and I tried not to think about how or why any of this was happening. I dreamt about it anyway. There was a recurring nightmare I had for weeks. I stood at the top of a hill overlooking the train tracks, and the head was rolling slowly up to me, its frozen white face flashing in and out of view, and it would almost reach me but would roll back down again, as if it were too tired to go on. And then it would try again, and again. Sometimes I was the head. It was always that kind of dream you get when you are sleeping in an uncomfortable place, and you are not fully asleep, and the dream just goes on and on and you wake up exhausted, confused, and nauseous. There was another one I had only once that I swore was real until I woke up. I was in bed watching the snow fall out my window one night when suddenly someone draped in what looked like a dirty bedsheet walked right up to my window and put their hand on the glass. They did not have a head. I started awaking and looked out the window and there was no one there. On my birthday, I trudged through the snow to visit the head. I had not visited it for like three days, the longest I had gone without checking its mouth for anything. I just wanted to see if it had anything for me. Not that it mattered because my boyfriend, a teacher at the school, was taking me out for dinner later that day and getting me a present anyway. I just had to. Sure enough, I uncovered the head from under its branches and pulled down the plastic bag from over its pale face and saw a couple of items sticking out from between its teeth. I picked out a dangly earring with tiny faux ruby stones still wet and dirty with slush. The other thing I pulled out of its mouth was the ripped and soggy front cover of a card with a picture of a puppy playing with alphabet blocks that spelled out the letters, Happy Birthday. An adrenaline rush sent an ooze of cold sweat out of my pores. I dared to investigate the head's shrunken eyelids, where its eyeballs had long sunken down into its sockets. How did you know it was my birthday? I hissed, scrambling to my feet, and backing away from it. A breeze picked up the edge of the plastic bag, covering the head with the yellow smiley face. Have a nice day. I quickly threw the branches back on the head and speed walked away just as an approaching train started to rumble the ground. I was shaken but settled into my usual attitude about the situation. There was a severed head that gathered random garbage and pocket change for me, just like the sun always rises and sets in death and taxes, etc., etc. 
I had an enjoyable time at my birthday dinner. My boyfriend suggested that we move in together. I said yes. A few days later I visited the head and took the two dimes from its mouth and told it I was moving away, and I would not be able to come anymore. That there were always hobos walking along the tracks who might need its services. When I said it, a sort of dense, heavy silence hung in the air. I said an awkward, well, thanks for everything, and went away unceremoniously. I felt like a weird for it, but it is not like this could go on forever. I was not going to take a bus every day just to retrieve whatever trash it found in the gutter. In fact, I thought I would finally call the police officers about the head in the spring. My boyfriend and I moved into a one-bedroom apartment in January. We were in the middle of loading things into the apartment when we decided to go out for a late lunch. When we came back that evening, I stayed planted in the doorway while my boyfriend went into the kitchen to put our leftovers in the fridge. Among the mountains of boxes and junk on the countertop sat a dirty white bag with a yellow smiley face on it. I do not know how he did not smell it yet. I asked him if he had brought that bag inside. Then he looked in the bag. There was a torn piece of a greeting card clenched in its teeth that said, I love you. The police officers were suspicious of us at first, but we got cleared quickly. Unfortunately, there were no cameras in the halls or outside the building, so I never found out how the head got there. But there was someone just barely caught on a gas station security camera, just at the top of the frame of the video, carrying a white bag down the street during the right time. They assumed this person put the head there, but the video is not detailed enough to be of much help in identifying them. DNA tests found that the head belonged to a 54-year-old woman who had been reported missing the previous fall, shortly before I originally found the head by the train tracks. She was known to police through various run-ins with the law, mostly for shoplifting and prostitution. But the most important thing I found out was that the head belonged to my biological mother, who had given me up for adoption when I was born. Because of this, I was able to make the decision about what to do with her remains. I had her head cremated and scattered her ashes in Lake Superior. But the rest of her? That was never found. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.